Welcome to this video. This is on how to make a propeller. That's a video I'm happy to do. Um, it's a request that I got online and happy to fulfill requests. I'm going to start off by making a new part and I'm going to choose a plane. I think it's the right plane's turn. I haven't started a sketch on the right plane since I don't know how long. I'm going to grab a ellipse and right on that origin make an ellipse. And to fully define this, I'll make a horizontal relation from here to here. And I'll add some dimensions. I'll say I want this to be three inches wide. It's your propeller. You can make whatever dimensions you like on it. I'm going to do half an inch from here to here. And I'm going to exit that sketch. Moving on to the either front or top plane, doesn't matter which one. I'll control seven that and I'm going to put a point down any arbitrary point and relative to the origin I'm going to make a horizontal relation and I'm going to give it a distance and what length do I want my propeller to be let's say I want it to be four feet so I'll do four times 12 inches 48 inches there we go and I'm going to exit that sketch then I'm going to start a new sketch. And I want to do it on the plane that encompasses both this point and this point on the wide side of the ellipse. And that would be my top plane. So I'll uh, get normal to that, control 8. And I'm going to make a spline tool. The spline took me the longest of any thing on the sketch menu to use to any degree of competency. It really confused me when I first started SolidWorks. But I'm going to grab this uh, endpoint here on the ellipse. And I'm going to go a little ways and click, go a little ways and click, and go a little ways and click right on that point that I made. So the distance from here to here is going to be the length of my propeller. And on these little uh, mid guys, what I can do is click on this little point that I clicked at, and these outside guys adjust the angle of the spline, and clicking on the point adjusts the position. Now, I can move this relatively close and get somewhat of a 90 degree angle out of it, and then I can adjust this angle. Let's see what looks like a real propeller here. I think pretty tangent over here seems not bad. Okay, I, uh, as far as a concept goes, this isn't bad, um, but when you're actually making a propeller, pay close attention because, you know, propellers are pretty complicated when you go do a flow analysis and things. I'm going to exit the sketch and I'm going to start a new sketch again on the same plane. And I'm going to again use the spline and this does not have to be symmetrical. In fact I recommend it isn't because most propellers aren't symmetrical. So I'm going to put a point, put another point, and connect it in on this end part here. And that actually looks like a pretty nice propeller right there. I'll just do some slight adjusting. Yeah, not bad for at least a design principle. So exit that sketch. Now we can get to the uh, good part. And what I'm going to do is loft features, lofted boss base. And I'll select uh, my ellipse right here. Select my endpoint. And then as guide curves, I'll choose these two that I've done. And we have a propeller, or a machete, or whatever you want it to be. And so we have the uh, general shape of a propeller going on. And what I'd like to do now is select this top plane, Control 8. And I'll just grow a little center section out of here. 
and I'm going to I can fully constrain this. It's nice that it's right on the origin, then I just give it a diameter. Well, three and a half looks not bad. Again, this is just a design principle. Don't get too emotional about it. Uh, I'm going to extrude this from both sides. And let me give one inch a try, see how that makes me feel inside. Not bad, but I'm going to do mid plane. Not bad at all. Now let's see if SolidWorks will let me mirror this. So I'm going to choose a, a middle plane here and I'm going to choose mirror, choose my propeller. There we go. So I've got a propeller going on here and I can add some details in here for fitment and whatnot. But you're, you're, I'm, I'm sure you're looking at this and you're thinking, okay, Joko Engineering, that's, that's a nice loft, but when this thing spins, it's not curved. It's just going to sit in some static air and maybe spin it, but not push it. So let's rectify that. Why don't I um, choose Insert, and I'm going to choose Features, Flex, and as a Flex input, I'm going to choose this body. And I'm going to twist it. And let's go with, and if necessary, I can grab any of these rings and move portions of the twist. I didn't actually want to do that, so I'll reset it. And now, um, what, what degrees do I want to twist this? So let's look at 45 degrees. And that, oh, I had it on bending. Let's go back to twisting. So you can get some curvature. Um, to, and you can get pretty much anything that you want. And I can change the way that these planes will move to cover different amounts of twisting. So I can get it to twist differently. It, right here it's twisting, 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 and then staying straight on the end. So it's all depending on how you want your propeller to be. I like having it twist all the way through, but I've never done a flow analysis on a propeller, so that'd be a learning curve. I'm going to go 65, let's say. And SolidWorks do, does a fair bit of thinking to get these twist to actually apply beyond the preview. There we go. So now I've got a propeller. This is again a conceptual design. You can do with it what you will. And I uh, hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time.